Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array, and today we're going to be comparing Adobe Rush and Premiere Pro, and taking a look at some scenarios where you might decide to choose one over the other. So, Adobe Rush and Premiere Pro. They're two different programs, but with essentially the exact same purpose, to help you make an awesome video. But that being said, they do still have two very different best use case scenarios. Adobe Rush is designed more for shorter, simpler videos with a bend towards the social media end of things, with features like one-click switching between vertical, square, and horizontal video. Premiere Pro, on the other hand, is more designed for complex, intricate projects, with a lot of tools to help you take your project from good to great. And that's it. I hope you guys like this video. Haha, <laughs> it's actually not quite that simple. There's a lot of false reasoning why a lot of users are stuck in either one platform or the other and unwilling to switch over. But for right now, let's just assume that you have the full Creative Cloud suite where you've got paid access to both of these programs. I think a lot of Premiere Pro users see using Adobe Rush as a wasteful downgrade. So to prove you wrong, I actually started out assembling this project in Adobe Rush, but a lot of Rush users might feel scared or intimidated to try out Premiere Pro. So I actually imported the Rush project into Premiere Pro to finish it off and add some nice touches. Now, I really don't care what your starting preference is for either of these two pieces of software. I just kind of want to expand your thinking a little bit so that you don't see using either of these pieces of software as a scary or negative thing. But to start it out, let's take a look at some of the benefits of using Adobe Rush. Now, one of the biggest upsides to using Adobe Rush is, like the name would suggest, speed. While a lot of Premiere Pro users might see the simplistic interface as limiting, it also means that new and intermediate users won't have as many options to have to sort through when making decisions. Just click, drag, arrange, refine, and boom, your edit is more or less complete. One thing I noticed using Adobe Rush is that I wasn't tempted as much to add fancy details out of order. Usually, as editors, the rule is that you want to get the structural part of your edit completely done before adding fancy details like effects or time-consuming composites, because if you end up axing that shot from your final edit, it means you're also getting rid of all the work you put into refining it. Sometimes it's really enticing to want to jump ahead and see if that particular shot and or edit is going to turn out exactly the way you hoped it would, but using Adobe Rush helped me to stick to the essentials first. And the final reason that it's faster is because of its ability to be used on mobile devices. This is an absolute game changer because it means that you can literally take a video on your phone and start editing it immediately. On the bus, on the subway, or wherever you are, it doesn't matter. You have the tools in your hands to start making your video. You know who this really helps out? People who upload a lot to social media. So it's really no surprise that there's some really nice features integrated to make that side of the equation work incredibly smoothly. Probably the most notable feature is your ability to instantly change up your aspect ratio, which has a landscape mode great for traditional viewing platforms like YouTube, and square and portrait modes for platforms like Instagram, Snapchat, and ugh, TikTok. On top of that, you've got publishing features so that you can sign into your social media accounts so that whenever you finish and export your video, it's immediately uploaded to the social media platform of your choosing. You can really see what I mean by there being so many different ways to save time. And it probably makes a lot of sense why they decided to call it Adobe Rush. But even though you can edit your entire video off of a smartphone, you probably don't want to do that if you have the choice. At least not all the time. That's why it's really helpful that you can take this project that's on your device, hop over to your computer, and work on the exact same project file. This is the massive benefit to cloud-based editing, being able to hop from one device to the other without missing a beat. And it's important to know that apart from your canvas looking a little bit more spread out or taller or squished looking, it's pretty much exactly the same editing interface. So if you know how to edit off of a smartphone, you'll know how to edit on the desktop as well. And there you'll probably have more computing power, at least I really hope you do. And there you'll also probably be able to finish and export your video with even greater speed. And to take your speed up to even the next level, you can use project and motion graphics templates to give your edit an insane level of production value in very little time. But chances are, if you're trying to up the quality of your videos, you're gonna eventually hit a ceiling with Rush. Whether it's the video and audio track limits, the limited native transitions, or the limited color workflow, you might feel sometimes like you just wanna take that Adobe Rush project and just plop it right into Premiere Pro. Man, if there was only some way to take your Adobe Rush project and open it up inside of Premiere, yeah, you can totally do that. Adobe Rush project files open up quickly and flawlessly inside of Premiere Pro. 
From here, you can take on Premiere Pro's awesomeness to help up the game of your partially completed videos. Now, here's a few suggestions about when you might want to use Premiere Pro to finish off an Adobe Rush project, or use it entirely instead of using Rush to start with. First of all, anytime you're sending stuff over to Adobe After Effects, think of complexity as a spectrum of these three programs. Chances are, if it's complicated enough to require After Effects for some parts, it's also going to hugely benefit from Premiere Pro as well. Next up, ask yourself if having really accurate control over your color matters to you. There are some really basic controls inside of Rush, but if you want the full spectrum of tools like scopes, curves, and, well, really anything beyond just the simple more or less sliders found in Rush, Premiere Pro is going to need to jump in at some point in time to help. Next up, if you're doing any sort of serious narrative film work, just do us a favor, skip Adobe Rush and start the process using Premiere. Anytime you start incorporating people in specialized departments, they're going to want to have an insane amount of control over their particular piece of the puzzle to be able to add their flair. And Premiere Pro works great with other programs, even other non-Adobe programs. Also, multicam work is one of those situations where you're definitely just going to want to start in Premiere Pro so you can have those nicely organized sequences from day one. Premiere works great with multicam, but it's already a complicated enough process without starting in a program that doesn't even support that function to begin with. So you can probably start to infer a lot of the ways that Adobe Premiere and Adobe Rush are really designed to do the same thing, but with two different use case scenarios. Adobe Rush is designed for shorter, simpler tasks with a bend towards the social media influencer, while Premiere Pro on the other hand is designed for intensive projects that could take days, weeks, or even months to fully create with a lot of TLC being put in during the process. But hey, regardless of which program you guys choose for your next project, we have tons of templates for both Premiere Pro and Adobe Rush to help you boost your quality level and save time doing so. I'll link to a page with templates for each of these platforms for you to check out. But guys, that's it for me. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, consider liking the video, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon so that you never miss when we post. Thanks so much for stopping by, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.